drugs, sex, violence, all three problems showing up in the same local park. It's, it's devastating, right, to, to know that there's been an, another life lost in our city. Jacksonville City Council President joining us working on this problem, plus his ideas to solve broader issues in the River City, and we'll hear his thoughts on the budget council needs to vote on later this month. We're also tackling a big issue in the state and nation, affordable housing. A local leader getting national attention shares her insights as Florida lawmakers struggle with what to do. On This Week in Jacksonville. Thank you so much for being with us. Welcome on this Sunday morning. We are joined here today in studio by Terrence Freeman, the city council president in Jacksonville. A number of topics to cover. I want to start with the budget and the process where that stands. But this is a big number. Uh, city council gets to have final say by the end of the month. Yes, sir. We, um, our finance committee has put countless hours, I believe 40 hours into budget hearings, going through it line by line. Uh, and then we met again and went over some enhancements. Uh, and now on the 13th and then the 27th, we're gonna have public hearings and I invite the citizens of Jacksonville to come out and share their thoughts. Uh, and we will let everything be, kind of be revealed on the 27th, but I'm really excited about what I've seen, the work that the Finance Committee's done, uh, my colleagues commit, contributing with the enhancements that we're gonna continue to move Jacksonville forward in this year's budget. Uh, I, even this week, preparing for our interview, I reviewed the proposed budget from the mayor, but it's big. $1.7 billion last year goes up, almost $1.7 billion in the 2022-23 cycle here. Are there places with those big numbers where you wanna see, hey, we should trim it here or we should increase it there? No, that's, that's a fair question. And you know, that was one of the intents or goals when uh, we looked at reducing an area when it comes to the, the, the millage rate um, and giving our citizens uh, some relief in that aspect, in that area. Um, but more importantly, I think, is the opportunities of what we can do with this XX funds that we have. And I believe there's gonna be maybe 50, 60, 70 million, depending on how it breaks down and how we as a council determine the best usage for those dollars. Uh, that's another conversation that's gonna be coming and, and I really look forward to hearing the thoughts of my colleagues and hearing the thoughts of the community uh, on how those dollars are gonna be either saved or spent as we move forward. Council President was uh, in the community this week. I wanna show you some video here. This week we covered as a news story problems at a West Side Park, including the discovery of a body at this park. So President Freeman, a 13-year-old boy discovered that person, Terrence Park, West Side. And speaking with people who live in the area, they say that this park is plagued by drugs and sexual activity, used drug paraphernalia we saw. That's just one of the complaints. You went out to try and help. What do you want to see done about this, both at this specific location and then maybe across Duval County? Yeah, I, my heart goes out to uh, the family of, the, of those who... Uh, experienced the loss of a loved one. One, um, As a coach, I visit parks frequently um, and love the fact that we have so many systems uh, uh, throughout our park space that are safe for our kids to go to. Unfortunately, uh, with, with so many parks, uh, one of the largest park systems in the nation, sometimes it's hard for us to keep up. Uh, I know we're actively reviewing right now um, and speaking with our parks director, uh, all of our parks again, to make sure that we are making sure that things aren't falling through the cracks. But in this particular situation, um, I've since learned that there is also an element um, of a homeless population that lives in near proximity on private property. And they are Jacksonville citizens. Uh, and they deserve our attention as well. And that leads into our, the special committee on critical quality of life needs uh, that we are starting up and, and looking to have a report out soon. So maybe explain that, that committee. What, what's the task for it? And is it already underway? What, what's going yeah, on? Yes, so there? we had our first meeting and Councilman Boiling is, is, is leading it for us. And I'm, I'm grateful that he accepted uh, the responsibility, but we're focusing on homelessness. We're focusing on affordable and workforce housing and access to health care. Uh, and in those areas, those three critical areas, I think uh, as we continue to bring experts in, bring citizens in, we invite everyone to be a part of this conversation. Uh, when we land in December, hopefully we'll come with some meaningful solutions that we can now apply dollars. Remember, I said we, we, yeah. we have 50, 60 million dollars that we can apply some meaningful dollars that can go deep into solving these problems. You referenced with that particular park, the Terrence Park on the west side there, that there's a homeless population in, in close proximity. Does that feed into some of the things that residents are complaining about? They're saying there's uh, prostitution happening and there's drug paraphernalia, all of that. Yeah, and, and we don't have enough time for me to share stories that I've seen as a coach. But what I can tell you is this, when a park is activated, when it is brought to life, that element of crime, darkness, it doesn't exist. It doesn't like it. 
It's only when those parks go dark and, and we know kids can't play sports all night long. Um, and so I look at situations like this where we know that we have an element in close proximity. Um, rather than just solely focusing on cleaning the park up, I want to go and reach those citizens that are in need, offer them the mental health um, access and access to health care that can really help them get to a place that then we can get them some job training through affordable and then into affordable housing to where we transition them into being productive members into our community. So we've got an expert on affordable housing in our next segment, but just talk a, about that for a moment. We, we, we hear that it's a crisis in Florida and across the nation. Is there something that Duval County really needs to be focusing on when it comes to that affordable housing? Because we've seen prices for everything in life, including housing, skyrocket in the last year or two. Absolutely. And, you know, as a homeowner, I mean, I benefited from the increase of all of the property values. and um, But it's not lost on me that there are many uh, who are trying to enter into that American dream uh, that are finding it challenging. There are those who are now in, into their, their finer seasons of life, our seniors, that are finding it difficult as well. And so this is a situation that is affecting from our seniors to our baristas, our barbers, our first responders. I mean, it's an, it's an issue that we have to address and we need to address it now. And I'm really looking forward to the work that's coming out of this special committee and the report coming in December. And hopefully my colleagues joining in with us and really trying to bring forward, similar to the resiliency committee that we had that landed with our first ever chief resiliency officer. Good point. Landing somewhere meaningful, significant, so that the residents and the citizens of Jacksonville could see that we care and we're going to back up our talk with action. Uh, President Freeman, the, the special committee that you're talking about, is going to address mental health at all? Because that, that's a key component when we're talking about some of these issues. No, right? Absolutely. And mental health uh, was introduced to me, uh, the challenges, uh, two years ago. Uh, Hearts for Minds is a group that I worked with and Cheryl Johnson and she shared, I heard her sharing her story at an event. Uh, and it moved me so much that I brought it to our colleagues and we started our a mental health awareness campaign. Uh, and you know, you hold the power to change the world in the palm of your hands. And they're little, they're dragonflies throughout the course of Jacksonville right now with QR codes. But yes, mental health is, is a big thing. And when we look at our homeless population, council member Nick Howland, he's cheering that up for us. He's big into veterans, right. that's what he does. And he right. mentioned a percentage, and I don't remember the number, of homeless folks that are veterans and what that number leads to when it comes to suicide of veterans. So deep dive into this issue is really gonna be big. Meaningful solutions coming out as a result is the hope. Yeah. City Council President Terrence Freeman, thanks for the time today. Uh, thank you, you, Ken, I enjoyed it. All right, so on that topic of affordable housing, I mentioned it a moment ago, a leader recognized throughout the state and earning national acclaim now. Shannon Nasworth joins us next on This Week in Jacksonville. There are no small cases at Harrell & Harrell. Every case counts, every person counts, you count. In every case, you get a dedicated team at Harrell & Harrell who give you attention and hard work. Don't settle for less than you deserve. In the next second, 14 families will decide. That's it, we're getting a bigger house. Finally. But we gotta sell this place. Before we buy the next place. And then in the meantime. So how long are you staying? Emily, no! Oh, a little cramped. I am cheap, pop man. Or skip the in-laws. Sell and buy your house with confidence. With Open Door. Move when you're ready. That's it. Indeed. When life's doors open, we'll handle the house. It's Macy's Labor Day sale with our lowest prices of the season for your home. Like the Jolene Sectional $12.99 and the Avondale Queen Bed $5.69. Plus, get a free adjustable base with qualifying mattress purchase. Now at Macy's. Whoa. How do they get these things to smell so good? <laughs> Must be magic. Hefty Ultra Strong with Fabuloso Scent. Jacksonville has a ton of great fishing spots for us to get hooked on. But to keep it real, you gotta have the bait. It's time to vote for Jack's Best Bait Shop. Just go to newsforjacks.com to make your voice heard. Jack's Best presented by Visit Jacksonville, where you're the local expert. It takes several sources of energy to bring you energy. There's natural gas, nuclear, solar, and something else. What led us to go green before it was fashionable? and reduce our dependence on foreign oil back in 2001. All while standing up for the American values we hold dear. You must have a source of energy that's pretty darn special. Florida Power and Light. 
I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. As millions flock to the metaverse, many are experiencing unnecessary pain and suffering, terrible car crashes, frightening trip and falls, and on-the-job injuries. Our army of over 800 attorneys and 4,000 support staff have recovered billions for clients just like you. Injured? Just dial pound law. That's all. Morgan & Morgan, America, and now the universe's largest injury law firm. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. Listen, we know how busy you are, especially in the morning. So we're here to get your day started right. Alerting you to scams and rip-offs. We don't want anyone taken advantage of. Tracking crime in local neighborhoods to help keep your family safe. And we'll let you know if pesky storms get in the way of your plans. We'll get you those answers. Oh, yes, we will. The Morning Show on Channel 4 makes mornings happen. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Thanks for staying with us today. So this summer, the Biden administration named Miami, Florida as the epicenter for the nation's housing crisis. An expert on affordable housing and what's happening in Florida, Shannon Nasworth is with us this morning. Thank you for coming back. Uh, we get to visit annually, something like this on, on the topic. Uh, so briefly, if you would explain your organization, Ability Housing, and then we'll kind of deep dive from there. Sure. So Ability Housing is a local nonprofit or an affordable housing developer. We buy and rehab or build new apartment communities and rent them at well below market rates. The topic affordable housing crisis. Okay, how do you explain that to people? What is the crisis? Uh, and then let's talk solutions, maybe. Absolutely. So the crisis is the fact that more and more families in our community simply can't afford housing. Wages are not keeping up with housing prices. We had a problem before COVID, and then, of course, so many people are moving to Florida and Jacksonville specifically, and they're coming with bank accounts and ability to buy houses, and sky the rents yeah. and the per, uh, cost to purchase housing is just skyrocketing. Yeah. And so people who live here are really struggling to find places they can afford. We, uh, over the last year plus, we've done those stories with folks who are saying, hey, my rent went up, I, I can't afford it. Um, I, I do want to point out that you've been recognized recently, uh, received recognition from uh, Globe Street Real Estate Forum, one of the people named in the Women of Influence Award. Uh, your name is one of 11 women across the United States recognized in the humanitarian category. So part of that, I would I guess, is the way ability housing, how you've responded to this crisis, what you've been doing. And this is not like the crisis came and then you jumped in. You've been working in this for a while. You've got to be seeing the impact or the effects of it, right? Absolutely. We have been doing this for a couple of decades now and we're making progress, but then things like this happen where, you know, year over year rent increases the past two years have been astronomical. Nobody foresaw that coming. And really, you know, I think what they were recognizing was one, that I have a fabulous team around me. I certainly do not do this on my own. But two, as a nonprofit, we just approach it differently and really try to work with the resident to make sure they're stable first and then we figure everything else out. All right, maybe describe that a little bit more. You work at it differently because you're a nonprofit. So what, what's the alternative and how are those two things different? Well, as a nonprofit, we're doing this solely for the purpose of doing it in and of itself. We're not doing it to make a profit. And there's nothing wrong with profit. The for-profit developers just have different motivations and different ways of approaching things. And for us, even if we had the opportunity, we wouldn't increase the rents beyond what our residents can afford. And we have seen across the market for-profits will do that because that's the business they're in. Yeah. So um, I, I want to point out, nine months ago, we saw a couple local lawmakers, they were working on this issue in Tallahassee, State Senators Jennifer Bradley and Travis Hudson. Uh, they said that it's a matter of finding the money to put behind these efforts. Again, this is nine months ago. Have state lawmakers done enough to address the crisis? And I guess additionally, do the solutions come beyond the scope of state government? No, they haven't done enough. We need to appropriate more to affordable housing, especially affordable rental housing. It is the greatest need. Um, they did fully fund the trust funds this year, which was wonderful, but unfortunately they diverted some money away from rental to other purposes. And we really have to focus on affordable rental housing across the state of Florida. But also, it is not solely a state government issue. It's local government, it's federal government, but it's also you and me and businesses and the faith community all realizing we have a role in helping to create a community where everyone can afford their housing. Give uh, an example. What can somebody in the faith community or locally uh, do to try and make a difference on this? The easiest thing they can do is if they have land that might be suitable for housing, to try and find an organization to work with to turn that into housing, especially in the faith community. Maybe they were gonna open a school or open a second church or something like that and that just didn't come to fruition. 
talk to us, talk to someone else. Maybe we can buy that from them and turn it into affordable housing. Finding land is among the hardest things. But other things that people can do is invest in housing, invest in affordable housing, hold our elected officials accountable, tell them this is important, notice if they don't invest in it. Those are all the things we as citizens in this community are responsible for. So uh, maybe as before we wrap up, uh, what does affordable housing look like? Are we talking about, hey, I'm just trying to put some apartments up? Is it, hey, we want uh, single family homes as well? What does that look like? All of the above. Um, for us, we focus on affordable apartment communities and high quality housing because everyone deserves quality. But we also need to make it easier for people to get into home ownership because that is how we build wealth in this country, but it's also how we reduce pressure on the rental market if we get more people into home ownership. We just don't buy or build uh, starter homes anymore. It's a real challenge mm. in this community. So uh, w one of the reasons that this uh, rose to my attention a few years ago, uh, St. John's County growing like nobody's business, but all the homes that seem to be developed there were not starter homes. Absolutely. And, and so where are the the staff members for the Starbucks or yeah, mm -hmm. where are people who are going to work in that community going to find a place to live on a minimum wage job? That, that, it, that's part of the problem, right? Absolutely. It's a problem in St. John's. It's a problem in Duval. Uh, the city of St. Augustine is really concerned about their employees, the people working for the city. They're all starting to live in Putnam County. That's not sustainable. They need employees closer to where they work. All employers need employees that are closer to where they work. And if the solution to affordability is a longer commute, they stop being an employee there and they, yeah. employ, they work somewhere else. Yeah. Shannon, I appreciate it. Maybe final minute. Uh, is there something you want to see between now and the end of the year that would change this, this delta for people who can't afford it now, but maybe they could by the start of 2023? If the federal government would add affordable housing into the budget and increase expenditures, both for the tax credits as well as the HUD budget, that would be awesome. Shannon Nasworth, I appreciate it. Uh, there's, it it's a problem that continues, but it's good to talk with somebody who's saying, hey, we're trying to fix this. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. All right. So what does the future of health care in our area look like? The president of Baptist Medical Center Jacksonville is here. Nicole Thomas joins us next on This Week in Jacksonville. Each week, Channel 4 recognizes the Snyder All-Star Athlete. If you'd like to nominate a high school athlete who excels in the classroom and in the community, go to news4jacks.com and look for All-Star Athlete under the Sports tab. Helping those who need us most, putting your success before our own. This is our promise today and what we want to be remembered for always, Farah and Farah. It's the classic debate, sizzling sausage or crispy bacon. drive through McDonald's for a sausage, egg, and cheese McGriddles, sausage McMuffin with egg, or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. Buy one, get one for just a dollar. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I'm Marco Rubio, and I approved this message. Val Demings votes 100% with Pelosi. America has faith. Demings praised defunding the police. The council is being very thoughtful. Demings called violent riots beautiful. I thought it was a beautiful sight. Demings even voted for Biden's border crisis. Crisis at the border is nothing new. Val Demings, another Blame America First radical rubber stamp. America has failed. On September 24th, join the Dreams Come True 5K and One Mile Fun Run presented by TOTE. Come to UNF and walk, run, or roll for the dreams of local children facing life-threatening illnesses. In the month of September, all donations will be matched by an anonymous donor. Register today at dreamscometrue.org. Have a banana, Hannah. Try the salami, Tommy. Jalapenos. You put the gravy Jalapenos. Yes. Easy. No, come on now. We got this. <laughs> Try a tomato, plate too. Here's cacciatore, Dory. Taste the bologna, Tony. Everybody eats when they come to my house. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. You need some water? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. 
I was a little nervous. You were? <laughs> if you or a loved one lived or worked at Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987 and were later diagnosed with cancer, cardiac defects, kidney disease, or Parkinson's, you may be eligible for compensation through the Justice Act. Call 1-800-LAW-FIRM today to learn more. Our AC is out. Duty calls, kids. If your AC is running but not cooling, making loud noises, or your home's too humid, now you can schedule an appointment online at SnyderAC.com. You're my hero, Snyder Man. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. 10X Jacksonville is back for its 2022 conference. 12 speakers are going to be featured, plus musical and artistic performances. The focus this year is on positive change and innovation. Joining us right now, local health care leader Nicole Thomas, the president of Baptist Medical Center in Jacksonville, one of the speakers at this upcoming conference. So uh, I wanted to talk with you because I know the conference is called Friction. Yes. What are you trying to talk about? How does friction go with a healthcare expert and what you're going to visit with uh, the sure. crowd about? So the title of the conference is Friction because we believe that's what it takes for innovation. And so as a healthcare leader, we're looking forward to talking a little bit about what friction is going to take for us to improve health outcomes here in Jacksonville. President Baptist Medical Center in Jacksonville. We were chatting a few years ago. I met you were down at, at Baptist South and what yes. have you. Have you given a speech like this before? Have you done a TED talk? I've never <laughs> done a TED talk. So we're super <laughs> excited to have the opportunity to do so. Yeah. As I read just kind of the summary of what you plan to talk about, what would share with people? What are you going to talk about? And it really kind of that innovation thing with healthcare, right? Sure. So my talk really is asking the question, how could it be that two communities only a few miles apart have such different health mm. outcomes? For example, how is it that black babies die before their first birthday mm. at three times the rate of wow. white babies? Or how is it that breast cancer has become the number one cause of cancer death for black women when detected early? is curable. And so, yeah. as a healthcare leader, I'm really charged with making sure that our health outcomes are equitable no matter what community. And it's going to take us all to make sure that happens. Well, so, and I wanted to ask you to maybe clarify this or define this community healthcare. What, what do we mean yeah. when we say that? So when I think about community health, I think about uh, residents when they feel their best in wellness, physical wellness, mental wellness and it's about when we can slice the data no matter household income rate age race or ethnicity the outcomes are the same the same mortality the same burden of disease it's all the outcomes are the same no matter how you look at it nicole is so interesting because uh, w what you're talking about there usually i hear spoken about in terms of economic outcomes hey we want to level the playing field uh, take the economic part out. Everybody deserves uh, to have a quality of life, uh, to health care. Um, so I think that's, that's interesting. Is, does health care, does good health care in our community or health in our community, does that start with education? Where does it start? I think you're exactly right. Um, education is critical. And what we are finding is that household income is one of the most significant predictors of health outcomes. And so education is going to be key in helping raise your household income. So Baptist is actually engaging the high schools all across the city to make sure that teenagers are exposed to health care yeah. as a career. And we're partnering with this colleges in our town as well to make sure we're training the next generation of healthcare leaders to fill the many open positions, not only at Baptist, but in healthcare in general. It is an opportunity for us to create economic mobility. In turn, that creates access to resources for these people and then on to great health outcomes. It's a virtuous cycle that um, is never ending once we get people engaged. It's interesting because there, it seems like there's great health care in Northeast Florida. Absolutely. Uh, Baptist is one of those outstanding organizations, but there are others here yes. providing it as well. Is there a partnership component to medical centers like Baptist and maybe specific schools when we're talking education, things that you can do to try and 
raise that level of awareness? Absolutely. So one of the um, programs that comes to mind for high schoolers is our Tipping the Scales mentoring program. So Baptist employees actually get partnered with a high schooler and stay with that high schooler throughout their four years. And um, we give them access to uh, folks who can help them, encourage them along the way, and actually offer a job at Baptist over time. So um, we're excited and we've been doing that now for years with great results. And we're um, really pleased with how that's coming along. And then I think about what we're doing with the accelerated um, um, nursing program at J Jacksonville University, right, where yeah. um, if in fact you have your bachelor's degree and would like to get into healthcare, 12 month program to get your nursing uh, degree and come to work for Baptist. So exciting times ahead. It, it, as you mentioned that, I think of uh, the the need for nurses, Absolutely. right? So you're trying to uh, fill a, a void there and it's something that potentially really helps the broader community, right? That's exactly right. So nursing is such a noble profession. I think about the wonderful um, service that they continue to give and have given throughout the pandemic. They are truly the healthcare heroes that are uh, putting their hearts and hands on the line every day in service to this community. Yeah, final minute. Uh, how do you like being here in Jacksonville? How's this experience been getting plugged into the community? Absolutely. The Jacksonville community is just wonderful. Um, I've been here at Baptist now almost 12 years, and it has been an absolute joy um, meeting so many wonderful people who are supportive yeah. and um, who really want to help partner with you to see you excel and contribute to making this a great place to not only work, but also to live. I, I remember when we first met that we were about on that same timeline. I've been here in Jacksonville about 12 years as well, and yeah, it's it's a great community to Indeed. put down roots and, and do your thing. Nicole Thomas, thank you so much. Appreciate I want to make sure that you know this year's TEDx Jacksonville conference takes place in October. The theme, as we mentioned, is friction. The uh, conference is going to be downtown at the Center for Performing Arts Saturday, October 22nd. The conference begins at 11 that morning. Well, Jacksonville Chamber CEO Daniel Davis officially joined the race for mayor of Jacksonville. He's with us next time. We're also talking with Andrew Rush from Redwire, the aerospace executive. He's also going to be talking at TEDx Jacksonville. This Week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and the CW17 and online at newsforjax.com or streaming on News 4 Jax+. Plus. Why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida, and South Georgia's number one source for local news.